If you've seen some of Apple's new commercials around the iPad Pro, you've undoubtedly seen them touting their new LiDAR sensor on it, and maybe you wondered, just for a second, what is LiDAR? Well, in this Decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel, let's talk about this neat little measurement tool. So firstly, LiDAR isn't new, and it's been around for a while. It's mainly used by scientists, usually in the form of LiDAR drones, to examine the surface of the Earth, and it's used in conjunction with other sensors on various autonomous cars to help them get a better sense of objects around them. Now, LiDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging, and is similar to radar, just using light instead of radio waves. Radar stands for radio detection and ranging, by the way. So how LiDAR works is that it fires out rapid pulses of infrared laser light in quick succession. Lasers being just super focused wavelengths of light, by the way. Now, that light then bounces off objects in front of it and returns to the LiDAR sensor. The time it takes for the light to make that round trip is then calculated and used to create a 3D model of the object that can be used for measuring distance to the object, height and shape of the object, etc. Now radar, on the other hand, does the same thing, but with radio waves as I mentioned. So it sends out radio waves that then bounce off of objects and then the time it takes for them to return is measured to determine the distance and position of the objects, etc. Now one of the major differences between LiDAR and radar is that LiDAR is a lot more accurate and can create more defined 3D models, whereas radar, on the other hand, sort of sees objects in more of block-like shapes. Because of that fact, LiDAR can be used to more easily determine things like, say, the way a person is facing, a hand from a face, the number of branches or leaves on a tree, etc., where radar would just have a much harder time doing so. On the flip side, though, radar has a much further range than LiDAR and is much cheaper to use. It also isn't as affected by rain, fog, snow, etc., like LiDAR can be, since those things can interfere with light. Generally speaking, Either of these systems is used in conjunction with GPS, ultrasonic sensors, cameras, when we're talking about an autonomous car and LiDAR drones and planes to sort of round out the system. And now, why are we starting to see it in consumer electronics all of a sudden? Well, time of flight, or TOF, systems have been making their way onto phones to help with AR as well as things like portrait mode, focusing, etc. for a while now. And technically, time of flight is the method used to measure the time of flight of the light to and from the object, in this case, to determine the distance, etc. And LiDAR is the sensor that's being used to do that. So if you're familiar with Samsung, Oppo, Motorola, all of the other Android manufacturers that you know have had 3D time of flight sensors on their devices for a while now, you're probably wondering, what is the difference then between Apple's LiDAR one and theirs? Now, it's safe to say that Android's time of flight camera system and Apple's time of flight LiDAR sensor are both technically using infrared light and bouncing off of things in front of them to determine distance and shape of objects, etc. The difference between the two though is that Apple's using multiple points for reference, whereas the Android time of flight system is essentially just using a blanket of infrared light for all of its measurements. And it took me a little bit, but I think I can actually show you what I'm talking about. Now the infrared light being used by both of these systems is technically invisible to the naked eye. I can't see it, you can't see it, and that means my camera can't really see it. But I happen to have here a Nest Cam, which has a night vision mode, which does see infrared light. So here is the iPad 2020 with its AR mode turned on, and you can clearly see all of the different infrared points. And here's the Galaxy S20 Ultra with its AR mode turned on, and you can see this what almost looks like a flashlight of infrared light. Regardless of the method, the software has to take all of the reflections and determine which of them are indirect and off-angle ones and remove those from the calculations and then crunch the numbers on the reflections it cares about. This whole process is simply harder to do with a single flash versus the multiple points. The downside to LiDAR in this application, however, is the same as with most new technologies. It's more expensive, of course. And the fact that the only real use cases right now for it are 3D effects like portrait mode and the like, and then AR applications, um, which of course haven't quite taken off in the general public's eye, at least not your average consumers not sitting around using AR all day. So there's just not a lot of real reasons to use it at the moment. But as these new technologies become more prevalent in all of our devices, whether we need them there or not, maybe we'll start to see new use cases that we'll be able to benefit from it. Personally, I've seen some people put together some really interesting autofocus systems for cameras like the one I'm using here, using LiDAR and time of flight. And I would love to see more accurate autofocus come out of that. 
And there you go. Quick little explanation of what LiDAR is and why it's all of a sudden on Apple devices. Um, I will say though that using the iPad Pro and Apple's own measure app, it is more accurate than it feels like it is on say like an iPhone. So there is something to that. But again, how often do I use any of those AR applications? Not really ever. So there you go. Either way though, there you go. Now you know what it is. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of LiDAR, of it being included on devices, whether you want it or not, and how else you feel about this video in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And also let me know uh, other decoder episodes you'd like to see, other topics you'd like to see me decode on here. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up and share it. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to word subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, there's a link below to my email newsletter. It goes out once a week. It has all the videos I do here on YouTube, plus tips and tricks and other fun things that I do on the website that don't necessarily make it into video. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.